Hello, I'm Sean Linton, the HSJ's Workforce Correspondent. Uh, today, in this roundtable discussion, we're going to be exploring the implementation of the Junior Doctors contract following the bitter dispute between the government and the British Medical Association and Junior Doctors. There are lots of issues to discuss about how trusts will implement the contract, how will they win over uh, junior doctors and tackle morale and the very real day-to-day -day issues of the contract as it becomes uh, a reality in the NHS. I think now the contract's done in a way and that's how I feel and I know some people don't feel that way and they feel that there's still kind of a fight to go on but it's being implemented. I think now it's how it's implemented at local level and that it really does need the engagement of junior doctors to implement it in the best way and that has to be involved with the highest levels within trusts. The Virginia Mason principle which is based on Toyota is, is, is this term called NEMA washing which is to prepare the people for the change that's going to come and um, we had a, a useful conversation Now, the reason I mention that is that it occurs to me that I'm not sure there's been very much NEMA washing done with these guardians in NHS trusts. And I do think that that role is potentially going to be quite challenging for the individuals uh, that have, that have taken, taken that on. Yeah, if junior doctors who are working in a trust don't feel that the guardian is behaving in an open and transparent way and isn't actually speaking the truth, um, about how bad things are for junior doctors in terms of working patterns, you know, what is and what isn't acceptable, then I think that, that this is just, it's all going to go awry. That is the biggest challenge for me, is really kind of moving away from the legalistic idea of the points of terms and conditions of the contract and recognising us as professionals in our own right and recognising the value that we can offer the NHS um, down the line. And I think you have to move from this point of being this kind of isolated group that we talk about to actually being a group of people that can be a force for good. You'd be surprised how much junior doctors understand about this new contract. One of the things that employers need to be aware of is this, this is a contract in dispute. This is not a cost neutral contract, this will cost money. What our members are saying to us is they absolutely recognise that um, it's really important they engage effectively with junior doctors and that we implement the contract um, in the way that it's designed to be implemented, but also crucially we address some of those very important important non-contractual issues that have been raised as part of the dispute. People do need to talk with each other and implement it together. Now I know that currently BMA don't, aren't doing that because the contract is in dispute, but I think that really from leaders in your respective organisations you have to come and meet the junior doctors where they are and bring them with you rather than expecting them to come to you. And there are some wider issues around how we value junior doctors in the system. Um, and we're very keen to look at the way in which we do assessments, for example. Uh, there's an annual review of progression, and some of that has been reduced to almost a tick box approach. How do we get people to feel that that's meaningful, both for themselves and for patients and the service? In terms of uh, the, the financial consequences of the contract, uh, it's hard for us to be clear at this stage, but the, the costs of the new contract are likely to be uh, significantly more than the former contract. While we have rated gaps, like all other NHS trusts, uh, we clearly have to think about the cost of the new contract and then the cost of, of ensuring we have the workforce that we need uh, to meet the needs of our patients. A lot of the anger has been about pay terms and conditions. Um, you know, there's various different parts of the country. London is a particularly expensive area to live. There doesn't seem to be any acknowledgement of that. So being a junior doctor in London, you can't shy away from the fact that it is more expensive to live here. So pay needs to be reconsidered, I think, at a point in the not too distant future. Getting information out to doctors so that they know where they're going to be working much earlier. That's called the code of practice. And we've agreed a change that will give a month longer notice to people. We're also looking at access to things like less than full-time training. Um, can we look at the rules around that? Is it flexible enough for people? Uh, we're looking into the length of rotations. If you don't need to move from a hospital, why are we rotating you annually? I know HE in particular, particularly unloved at the moment. I do want to say thank you for the initial <laughs> thoughts and, and ideas you have had about changing some of the things about um, how we work and contracts, I think we're a really positive start. But what I would say is that lots of those have been mentioned in things like the TUC report before, 
and, mm. and, and it needs to be then followed through and implemented. Mm. If people have an idea, a suggestion, I'm not going to say a complaint, or people have a concern, they have a system whereby they can report that. They know it will be listened to in a timely fashion, not 28 days, but probably 24 hours. And, it, and somebody will come back to them and somebody will act on it. And that will foster and build confidence and trust that they're being empowered.